Hi, my name is Sarah Helmick, and this is my research on the association of dietary fiber intake with metabolic syndrome. And Dr. Martin Root helped me with this um, research, as well as Dr. Kyle Thompson and Dr. Alicia Ferris. So metabolic syndrome was once commonly known more in economically developed countries, but is now spreading globally. Metabolic syndrome is characterized by having three of the five factors, large waist circumference, high blood pressure, high fasting triglycerides, high fasting glucose, or low HDL cholesterol. It's estimated that 12 to 37% of the Asian population and about 12 to 26% of the European population have metabolic syndrome. And in a study conducted by the CDC, the prevalence of metabolic syndrome rose more than 35% from 1988 to 1994, to the other time span of 2007 to 2012. Metabolic syndrome prevalence increased from 1988 to 2012 for every sociodemographic group, and by 2012, more than a third of all U.S. adults met the criteria for having metabolic syndrome. It is hypothesized that high-calorie, low-fiber fast food and decreased physical activity due to sedentary lifestyles and mechanized transportation are two of the largest driving forces of metabolic syndrome. Dietary fiber plays many roles in the body, and different types of dietary fibers are linked with controlling body weight, keeping glucose and lipids in homeostasis, maintaining insulin sensitivity, and regulating inflammatory markers involved in the pathogenesis of metabolic syndrome. The aim of my research was to evaluate how fiber affected the out outcome of metabolic syndrome in 12,132 participants in the ERIC study, which is the atherosclerosis risk in communities. Um, I use linear regression for this. Metabolic syndrome is impacted heavily through the diet, and in theory, dietary fiber could impact the outcome of this cluster of conditions. The ERIC cohort is a prospective epidemiologic study conducted in four U.S. communities, with each location having randomly recruited 4,000 individuals aged 45 to 64 to receive examinations including medical, social, and demographic data. Each three years, participants were re-examined with screenings and information on age, sex, race, education, and current smoking status were obtained from home interviews, and information on height, weight, and BMI were taken in the clinic by trained professionals. Dietary fiber intake, carbohydrates, and energy were estimated using an FFQ. The daily intake of various nutrients was computed by multiplying daily servings by the nutrient contents. Those with diabetes and those with alcohol intake greater than 15% of daily energy were excluded from this study. Metabolic syndrome was calculated through the five defining characteristics based on visit one and given a score of zero to five. HDL um, lower than 50 for women was a one. HDL lower than 40 for men was a one. Waist measurement above 35 inches for women was a one. Waist measurement above 40 inches for men was a one. Systolic blood pressure greater or equal to 130, or diastolic blood pressure greater or equal to 85 was a 1, fasting glucose greater or equal to 100 was a 1, triglyceride measurement greater or equal to 150 was a 1, and each score was added to get a number 0 to 5. Statistical analysis was completed uses, using linear regression to find the correlation between dietary fiber and metabolic syndrome. The univariate model used dietary fiber in increments of 10 grams per day as the independent variable and metabolic syndrome score previously calculated as a dependent variable and was not statistically significant. The demographic model included dietary fiber as the independent variable with age at visit one, sex, and race as covariates with metabolic syndrome score as the dependent variable and was not statistically significant. The multivariate model included age at visit one, sex, race, BMI, carbohydrates in grams per day, energy and calories per day, college education, and current smoker status as covariates with metabolic syndrome score as dependent variables. The model was statistically significant with a p-value of 0.031 with a declining beta. So for each 10 grams of fiber, metabolic syndrome was reduced by 0.055 units. The multivariate model was also used with vegetable dietary fiber per 10 grams of day per day, legume dietary fiber, cereal dietary fiber, and fruit dietary fiber all in 10 grams per day. And metabolic syndrome score was used as the dependent variable. 
The only statistically significant fiber was serial dietary fiber with a p-value less than 0.001 and a beta of negative 0.031. In conclusion, dietary fiber was significantly associated with lower metabolic syndrome scores in the ERIC cohort and may prove to be a part of a beneficial dietary intervention. Cereal fibers, or whole grains, were also a particular fiber that was statistically significant. Thank you so much, and I hope that you enjoyed this presentation.